All right guys, so I know this looks very similar to the last video, but it's different, trust me. We're gonna show a lot more about the amplifier here. We're gonna dyno it, do a demo of it a lot more. The reason I broke the video up into two different parts is I wanted to get some information from possibly old MA Audio employees or dealers and things like that. And we did get some more information. So if you haven't seen the last video, check it out so you'll know. What's in the box? My name is Derek and I do YouTube videos about audio equipment. Videos about audio. I know it doesn't make sense, but if you guys enjoy that type of stuff, you might enjoy subscribing to my channel and I'd appreciate it. So stick around for the cool content and don't be surprised if you see a big dummy. All right, so a lot of people saw the last video and thought I was teasing the reason I was just showing the unboxing of this amp and not anything more like the dyno test. But honestly, I wanted to learn more about the amp and get some more feedback from dealers uh, so that we could add this to the video with the dyno. So with that said, I do have access to their Ryan Blue Book from 2003, and the MA Audio Com 1 is listed here. You can see $3,513 in 2002 was the suggested retail price, so that's the same price it shows in the 2002 Car Audio and Electronics directory which we have a picture of here. And you can see the MA Audio Com 1. It's listed at the very top. It's a six channel amp. It says 1800 watts RMS, dual VU meters, patented AHL fuse holder, quad mono, $3,513 again. And I gave a screenshot here of the whole page. So if you guys have any of the other MA Audios from 2002, you can gladly use this page to look those up. Now I got some great feedback from the YouTube comments and this is what I was looking for and thanks you guys who provided the information. I'm going to highlight some of the favorite ones here. Matthew says, this is the second generation of the command center. Memory serves right. There were only 150 of these made. He's trying to find his old data sheets. This was meant to be a promo unit for display. The wow factor cost was stupid cheap to a dealer and uh, he talks about a rep who had one in his car. And the last comment here is probably the most useful. Used to be MA Audio dealer. This is a promotional piece. MA Audio told me only 250 of these were ever made. It never had MSRP is what he says. Um, I was questioning the 250 that were made. So yeah, I'm not too sure about how many were actually made, but I did find it for sale thanks to the Wayback Machine on the internet, $1,754. Wow. All right, here's the huge MA Audio Com 1. I've got it on my little test cart here has all my caps on it. I wanted to show you how the amp connects. You have to actually tilt it up to be able to get to the screws for the power and the ground and the speaker terminals as well. So it makes it a little bit more difficult because you can't just you know insert your speakers and your power and ground and stuff and tighten it up from the top obviously because the top panel um, goes over so you have to tilt it up and get under it. And here's the other side. Use one alt gauge for power and ground on both sides of the amp for the test and eight gauge for the speaker connections. So when you first fire it up, the fans come on kind of full blast, but then after 30 seconds, maybe a minute or so, the fans will calm down. These fans sounds like, sound like they could be replaced. <laughs> They're making a little bit of noise, but uh, yeah, they get quieter. Stick around for after the dyno test. We'll show you the guts. We'll also show you a sound demo of the amp hooked up. First, let's fire up the amp dyno here. And for the test, we have all the six channels loaded. So first off, we're going to check the high side, which is the four channel side. And we do have all channels loaded. Like I said, we're using these braking resistors, which are the same things that are in the dyno. All right, let's start with the four channel mode. We have all four channels loaded. We're just testing two of the four. It's rated 50 by four at 14.4 volts. You can see we got 64 and 63 at four ohms. Very nice two ohms 
We're going to test that it's rated 85 by 2. And we get, look at that, 117, 112. So it beat that also. Then we're going to try 1 ohm. Now this load, it's rated to do quite a bit more. It's rated 150 watts per channel. Look at that. We got over 200 watts per channel. So it did good. I was actually really impressed. I didn't think this amp would do quite so well. So Big D says, yeah, boy. All right, next up, we're going to check the sub channels and it's two channel mode. So we're going to do two channel mode first and then the bridge mode. So let's start off with the four ohm test where it's rated to deliver 250 by two at four ohms and didn't quite get there. <laughs> 139 watts per channel. Yeah, we don't know what's going on. Big D's like, what the heck? So let's try it at two ohms. Again, this is a stereo mode on the sub channels, rated 450 by two at two ohms. And again, what's going on here? 247, 245 watts. Yeah, it's not looking so good for the home team. Well, let's try one ohm. And on the one ohm load, it is rated to deliver 750 watts by two and we struggled to get 400 by two what do you have to say about that thanks big d this is dick riculous D <laughs> all right now we'll try the one ohm mono load which we know it's not going to get its ratings because it didn't get even close at four ohms we're going to try it anyway so let's try it first uncertified which will take us up to clipping 40 hertz on the sub channels Rated 2,500 by one. Yeah, right. We almost got 1,200 watts. 1,198 at 14.21. So maybe they rated it dynamically. So let's try the dynamic burst at 40 hertz. One ohm bridge on the sub channels. 1,405 watts. So still 1,000 watts shy of that 2,500. I know you guys like me love to see amplifier internals. So I'm gonna take this one apart. It's not too bad. It only has these little end feet, end cap type things you take off first. And there's uh, 14 screws, seven across the top, seven across the bottom. And then we can just use the handles and lift it up. And here are the internals. 41 inches of beautiness. There is the VU meters, there's the fan. See the transformers above that, some filter caps, 25 volt, 220 microfarad. They're actually the same on both sides for the filtering. The rail caps are a little bit different. You can see they're actually underneath the fan, which is kind of odd. I don't know why they'd have a fan by the filter caps. There are all the switches. It's got more switches than Snoop Dogg, 64 Impala. You big There's the other VU meter. And it looks pretty similar on both sides. Here again is the left side, which is actually the subamp side, not the high side. There's the middle with the 30 bands of EQ times two and the sub channel. And then here's the right side. This is the four channel side for the high speakers. Here's an end shot, kind of cool looking. Look all the way down the amp. And here's a wider shot of the amplifier. Lots of aluminum here, very cool looking design still. I got the MA Audio COM1 all hooked up here on my temporary test bench. Got it wired into the 14 volt battery bank. Got me a little test speaker here. And we're going to use the Infinity Sub down at the bottom. Let's fire it up.
before we get to the results, make sure you check out my new podcast with my buddy Hi-Fi Vega, 12V Talk, youtube.com slash 12V Talk, or check 12V Talk on your favorite podcast app. Check us out. Now on to the results of this MA Audio Com 1 6 channel Beast Wannabe. Well, you can see here are the four channel mode and actually it would not work bridged because one of the four channels was kind of weak, but it actually did really well in the four channel mode. If I can find out what's wrong with that one channel, I could run them in the bridge mode and I have no doubts that it would meet its ratings on this side. However, on the subwoofer side, it failed miserably, got about half of its ratings in each of the loads. So I knew that 2,500 watts wasn't gonna be attainable, but I was thinking maybe 1,500 if we were lucky didn't quite get there. Go ahead and pause your screen if you want to read all the results here, all the different modes. Now I know some people would be upset, you know, having an amp like this that's so big, so pretty, and yet doesn't do its rated power. Well, I don't really care. I still think it's awesome. I mean, how many amps do you know have two 30 band EQs on them? Not very many I know of. It's still pretty rare. And here's a size comparison with the US Amps VLX 200 which the VLX 400 is about two inches longer than this, but you can see it's right there, same length and actually a little bit wider. And here's a Power 650 Rockford Fosgate amp from way back in the day. You can see this amp makes it look tiny. So big shout out to my buddy Mike. He has a YouTube channel called Getting Belize. Him and his wife are moving to Belize. He's getting rid of some of his audio equipment. Big D scored on that one. Thanks again, Mike, for the awesome packing job. As always, thank you guys for watching, subscribing, commenting. Check me out at patreon.com slash oldschoolstereo. Till next time, Big D Wiz, I'm out of here. All right, I will put these over my ears, but uh, I'm going to do a demo here shortly. And... The Savard monster. Yes. Make sure you go back and check my videos. I've got over 500 videos here on YouTube, many of them car audio related. As always, thanks for watching my videos, for liking, commenting, subscribing, sharing with your friends, share with your grandma, share with everybody. Big D Wiz, signing out.